distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Jambo. Um, I'm truly grateful to be part of this very important and historic event. History is in the making. It is time for Kenya to claim its rightful place among Africa's leading vehicle manufacturers. South Africa's industry, for example, supports 100,000 direct jobs and over 350,000 indirect jobs, which produces 420,000 vehicles, 106,000 of which are exported. Morocco produces 248,000 vehicles, out of which 173,000 are exported, and in the process creates over 160,000 jobs while Egypt's automotive industry employs 70,000 people directly and produces 80,000 vehicles in 2020 with projections to scale up to 500,000 vehicles with exports of 100,000 vehicles. With investments like the electro deposition paint plant by Isuzu East Africa and its expansion and upgrade upgrading project, I am confident that Kenya can propel itself back to original vision, which was to lead African automotive competitiveness throughout the Africa continental free trade area. I will be making a trip tomorrow very early morning at 6 to Zambia for a meeting on COMESA and how we can bring together COMESA, East African community, and SADC into one ecosystem and one market with 720 million people and a GDP of $1.3 billion. As we consolidate the African market, our manufacturers must focus on the bigger opportunity that comes with a consolidated market, not just looking at Kenya, but looking at the region as well. We will begin the journey to make it possible for our local manufacturers to supply vehicles to government. The only request I am making to you is that as we buy locally, as we buy new vehicles under the leasing program, you have to guarantee us that these are locally manufactured vehicles employing Kenyans. I was very happy to listen to uh, Madam Gavashe that if we do a few things, we can double the vehicles being manufactured from 11,000 to 24,000 in two years. I will do what I have to do on my side. You have to promise me that you will deliver the 22,000 vehicles on your side. Um, secondly, is that we are launching this uh, plant that in itself is a, a history in the making, and therefore I am delighted to be here, the Isuzu East Africa facility today, to witness history in the making, as the company leads our automotive industry to a decisive leap forward. The decision to incorporate the state-of-the-art processes to enhance the standard of local vehicle production to world-class standard is a highly encouraging demonstration of intent by Isuzu to endow the Kenyan manufacturing scene with advanced technologies and enable it attain excellence. This is commendable especially because this commitment introduces the first electro deposition paint plant in our region which comes at a cost of I'm informed Kenya shillings 500 million. I want to say to the Isuzu family, congratulations. <laughs> Notably, the plant is one component of a drive by Isuzu East Africa to deepen its manufacturing operations in order to improve local vehicle production and make it globally competitive. Other enhancements include upgrading the assembly line production for new vehicle models, expanding the service 
workshop and the installation of various plant and machinery to improve production processes. In total, Isuzu East Africa has invested 1.3 billion shillings within the last four years in the expansion and upgrade, sending a clear and bold signal of its confidence in Kenya as an investment uh, destination. I would like to believe that this is a positive response to our policy measures which we have undertaken to provide incentives for investors to bring or increase their investments into Kenya. And I want to commit that the momentum for the enhanced um, participation of the Kenya government, especially in the realm of providing incentives for manufacturing, is a commitment that I want to make, building on what we have done already, that we are going to not only stay the path, but we are going to accelerate the momentum. Most certainly, this investment aligns with the government's vision to transform our economy by creating an investment climate and business environment that is conclusive, that is conducive to inclusive growth that leaves nobody behind in employment and wealth creation, poverty reduction, and the pursuit of sustainable prosperity. Our incentives package for the manufacturing sector is aimed at increasing its contribution to the national GDP to 20% by 2030. I was speaking about this subject this morning. We did undertake six, seven years ago that we wanted to enhance our uh, manufacturing as a contribution of GDP from 9 to 15%. Unfortunately, it went backwards from 9 to 7.2%. It is the reason why we are now deliberate and intentional on making sure that our policy initiatives speak to manufacturing directly. The reason why we have in our budget this year incentives on how we can use local paint. And I was very pleased, Madam Kavashe told me that they can get all the paint they need produced locally. There is therefore no justification whatsoever for us to continue importing paint which we can manufacture locally. And that is why we have um, in our budget this year um, provided for incentives for local production by making sure that those who want to import it uh, pay uh, some measure of taxing. Same thing we are doing around manufacturing in other areas. Steel manufacture is another area. We have developed sufficient local capacity. There is no justification anymore for us to continue importing steel, which we can manufacture locally. Same with cement, same with furniture. These are among the issues we are doing which are intentional, which are deliberate, and which are practical on making sure that we build our manufacturing capacity. And I want to tell Isuzu East Africa, as I tell all our other manufacturers, you can count on the government of Kenya to continue to provide these policy interventions so that we can enhance local manufacturing. For us to get to 15% manufacturing as a percentage of our GDP by 20 in the next five years. And for us to get to 20% by uh, 2030, it has to be deliberate. It has to be intentional. It has to be practical. It cannot, through, it cannot be through guesswork. We just have to be deliberate on what we are doing. Of course, as we do that, there will be issues raised uh, from different quarters. I have encouraged our brothers at the Kenya Association of Manufacturing to work with us on this uh, trajectory. Um, and, I, and I was uh, asking them the other day, how can the Kenya Association of uh, Manufacturing be opposed to incentives that enhance manufacturing? 
is a contradiction, isn't it? Yes, it is. I mean, they should be the ones celebrating what we are doing to enhance uh, manufacturing. The challenges included policy uncertainty, because that's what Madam Gapache has said, and instability, especially regarding tax laws, absence of a long-term roadmap for the sector, high costs of production, low volumes, inadequate skilled personnel, regional integration challenges, poor incentives, and the vexing matter of vehicle importation age limit. All this is a conversation we have had for a while. Um, it is my intention to make sure that we get ourselves to the realm where we are doing what is right. A national automotive policy is now in place as session of paper number one of 2022 with mechanisms to support industry growth such as assembly regulations and tax procedures, public procurement framework to support preferential procurement of locally produced units, national policy on local content or buy Kenya, build Kenya, and vehicle leasing to government institutions. Let me say the following, that we will expand our government leasing, uh, vehicle leasing uh, program to include many, many more areas, including all our forces, whether it is um, our military, we're going to be working now on working with uh, NYS, the police as we are doing at the moment, prisons, and even ministries. We will, and I am asking the ministry, represented here by P.S. Kombudo, uh, to give me an appointment with, uh, with these uh, good people, especially in the automotive uh, industry. In the next two weeks, we need to have a meeting. And when you come, when you come to see me, please prepare yourselves so that you come and tell me what I need to do and you tell me what you are going to do and we all agree on what the outcome will look like. That way, we will be able to march together into the future. Um, the Youth Vehicle Standards, or the KS1515, is not yet concluded, while the institutional framework establishing a National Automotive Council and the Local Content Development Assembly regulations remain outstanding. Even in this partially implemented state, the national automotive policy has increased the purchase of local vehicles by government, especially through leasing, which has boosted MSME engagement in maintenance throughout the country. Additionally, the change of the assembly regulations to allow different levels of vehicle assembly eased entry for new investors and products into the Kenyan industry with the assembly of pickups and passenger vehicles resuming. Further, there has been increased local production of vehicles, while new vehicle sales have shifted from fully built units to locally produced or completely knocked down units. I am aware of the opportunity cost of the delays in concluding these policies. As matters stand, we only have one original equipment manufacturer, five motor vehicle assemblers, and 32 registered motorcycle assemblers. Together, they assemble 46,000 vehicles and 300,000 motorcycles annually, and even at the current 20 to 30 percent of capacity, they support around 100,000 direct and indirect jobs. Our ambition is not just for these assemblers to operate at full capacity. We want more to set up so that we can supply the African market with globally competitive units, create more jobs, and enhance skill development, as well as promote safe and eco-friendly mobility that is reliable. I am looking forward, as I did announce on uh, Madaraka Day, that uh, we will be on the journey to assembling um, motorcycles, that electric motorcycles for that matter, that, are, um, that do not use fuel. I am also looking forward to 
the journey to e-mobility, including pickups, trucks, vehicles, two-wheelers, three-wheelers, four-wheelers uh, in Kenya. By September, we will have built the ecosystem for us to begin that journey. And I am looking forward to the participation of our automotive manufacturers in this journey. We are listening to you because we want to work together. We want to encourage Isuzu East Africa and other investors to deepen their investment in the country by moving into tier one component manufacturing and rapidly graduating to fully integrated manufacturing plants. This is why we are taking measures to conclude the preparation of the automotive bill in order to guarantee the implementation of the policy and formation of the council. We are also proceeding to review existing regulations and standards guided by the objective of enhancing the performance of our automotive industry. We are intent on fully exploiting the immense opportunity presented in the form of our automotive industry's untapped potential. We shall listen, partner, collaborate, and engage industry actors in a committed and intentional manner until the share of automotive industry in manufacturing as well as the share of manufacturing to our GDP moves sharply in a positive direction as we have committed ourselves. Let me also um, inform our automotive industry that recently I was presented with a catalogue of what our military needs to uh, use in, in their operations. And I insisted that 60% of all the purchases of trucks, pickups, and all the other um, uh, motor vehicles that are available, manufactured in Kenya, should be procured from the Kenyan industry. I have been very clear in my mind that there is only one way to build our manufacturing capacity. There is only one way how we are going to get the millions of young people in our streets, villages, towns, and shopping centers. There is only one way how we are going to get the 500,000 young people who graduate from our Tibets with skills, with competences, with knowledge, how we're going to bring them on board. We have to be intentional. We have to be deliberate about our manufacturing interventions. And we will work together. We will ensure that government gives priority, preferential priority to local manufacturers. We will ensure that we continue the journey to listen to industry so that they can tell us what they think government can do in terms of policy to support manufacturing so that we can grow um, our uh, local SMEs, expand opportunities for employment, be able to pay uh, the taxman, and all of us be able to move forward. I was very happy when uh, um, the CEO said they, they are paid 21 billion shillings to the, or in taxes. That was very good. To a big game of coffee. Uh, and I have taken the decision that as president of Kenya, we are not going to borrow to pay our debts. That one we will not do. Because it is not right to dig one hole to fill another. It is not correct to rob Peter to pay Paul. I think we just have to do the right thing. And I am very happy that the people of Kenya are standing with all of us to make sure that we put our country on the sound footing that we can carry and live within our means.